Good afternoon, everyone, or good evening to uh, you, wherever you might be in the world. Welcome to this special edition of the Sunday Evening Update, which is occurring on a Tuesday. A special edition because we have had a little bit of trouble uh, contacting our special guest, Professor Kevin Warwick of the University of Reading in the UK. But uh, he has agreed to conduct the interview at this special time. So again, remember, uh, if you have any questions for the professor here uh, on any uh, topics related to cyber like artificial intelligence or perhaps uh, some of his famous experiments uh, that he conducted in the past, be sure to ask them in the chat and I'll try and relate those questions uh, to our special guest. And now I would like to introduce to the program Professor Kevin Warwick. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Hi. Hello, and how are you doing on this fine Tuesday? Oh, just fine. It's just been a good day. Nice and sunny in England, which is quite surprising. Yeah, you know, I guess it's one of the more cloudy climates in the world. But something that is a little bit more sunny, I would say, is the field of cybernetics and artificial intelligence. Seems as though it is garnering a lot of attention recently in the media. And, of course, you have been one of the pioneers, I would have to say, in the field of cybernetics and uh, conducted a couple of very uh, famous experiments in that regard and I just want to give the audience here a little feel if you could describe uh, how you're how you in, ended up getting involved in this field I know many people I uh, talk to who are uh, artificial intelligence researchers or uh, cybernetic researchers uh, they kind of uh, as a, in their youth uh, got invest uh, interested in the field through, say, science fiction, either books or uh, television programming. Uh, I just wanted to get a feel for how uh, you uh, ended up in the field of cybernetics. Yeah, well, I guess I, science fiction for me as well. Um, Michael Crichton, he wrote a book when I was a teenager uh, called The Terminal Man. This was about a guy having electrodes pushed into his brain and uh, the uh, doctors were sending signals in to give him different emotions and so on, make him feel differently. And uh, for me, it was more a science book, I guess. I read it thinking that that all sounds possible. Um, I think as well as that, even films like War of the Worlds, uh, H.G. Wells, uh, at the time, the original film that was, and, and the book, um, gave me ideas as to what was possible for different life forms, which I guess more recently has become things like life and AI and then it was invaders from another planet but I was more thinking about humans interaction with them so science fiction in a number of ways but also technology I used to have a motorcycle when I was a teenager and tried to, to change how it was operating make it go a bit faster and so on uh, so technology as well so you're kind of always a, a tinkerer and always excited by science and science fiction. Yeah, I, th I think so, but I, not in an extreme way. Okay. You know, I'm just a regular guy. I enjoy soccer <laughs> and girls and having a drink and things like that. So I'm not, not a, a geeky person, but uh, nevertheless love technology, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, you ended up, uh, of course, now at the uh, University of Reading in the UK as a professor of cybernetics. And how did the thought of your cyborg experiments come about? Uh, I, I mean, how did you originally, uh, was it an idea that just popped into your head or was it something that had evolved over a couple of years and finally the technology caught up uh, with your experiment? Well, we've been um, dealing with robots for quite some time, um, putting if you like, artificial brains into the robots and seeing how they could be intelligent. And we had the building, my departmental building, we'd rigged up as an intelligent building, and oh. this was in the mid-1990s. So doors would open and respond in response to a smart card. But also knowing that the technology was there, that we could uh, implant in what at the time was a, a radio frequency identification device, an RFID tag now, but at that time, um, some people like Ray Kurzweil and others were saying in the future, people are not going to have passports and car keys, they're going to have uh, something under the skin implanted that identifies them, so as nobody had done it, in 98, uh, 
Oh, the technology was there. We had a setup, and uh, yeah, I, I had an implant. And that was your uh, that was the Cyborg One Point uh, that's, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, all it did was identify me to the computer, sure. but we got it to open doors for me and switch on lights and say hello, sure. things like that. So well, you see how that was pretty revolutionary, though. I would say, have to say, in 1998, though. Uh, it, it was. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, we we were surprised at how the news spread around the world. Um, I was told. A few weeks later, that in the central hospital in Moscow, the, the week after I'd done my had my implant, they had a.